guys welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel so today is january 27th in the bible through a year but we're actually going to do january 27th and 28th today because once again i'm not really sure how but we are a day behind was not my fault i'm not sure whose fault it was but if anybody has found them i again would encourage you to call me at 1-800 not my fault that's um 1-800 not my fault i'll put the phone number down here and you can just call leave a message you know what i mean if i don't answer it's fine um just just let me know like hey i found out whose fault it is and you know we can blame them but we're not gonna blame me because it's not my fault just once again to clarify um so <laughs> i don't know who needs to hear this but um i would encourage people to like go to church i know like in our generation like it's a lot easier and i'm guilty of this too like i will literally just sit at home and try to watch sermons um because i was just tired of going to church like the pastors that i liked were online and I like didn't like some of the churches that I was going to like they just were not for me and I told you I had a bad experience at one church and then you know I felt like I had another bad experience at a different church and um I did finally find a church that like I feel like I can belong to hopefully you know I've been going there for now a couple months and they've all been super welcoming and I'm really happy that I found a church and it's so different than like just staying at home and listening to a sermon like in your room or like whatever like actually going to church like going down to the altar like that's my favorite thing to do like ever like I'm telling you like things happen at that altar sounds like there's a song in there somewhere I think there already is a song but oh also I know I'm gonna shut up I promise I'm gonna shut up I promise I promise I promise I promise, I promise. I just want to say hi and welcome to my new subscriber I don't know I don't really know why people are still subscribing, I'm gonna be honest. Um, <laughs> I would be lying if I thought that this channel was gonna get one subscriber. So, you know what I mean? The fact that we now have seven, I am extremely excited about it, so thank you. Um, with that being said, we are on Exodus 2, 11 through 322, and then we're gonna go to, um, oh, it does skip a couple verses, I think. So 211 to 322, and then four, one through 521 so that'll be 26th and 27th and yeah with that being said we are going to have a So yeah, let's just <laughs> let's just jump into it, bro. You know what I mean? Can I just run the whole camera? No, it's fine. Okay. If you were not here yesterday or if you missed yesterday, um, Moses was born, but there was a new Pharaoh because Joseph, Jacob, everybody basically died, including the Pharaoh. And there was a new Pharaoh and he was like worried or he like kind of like fear mongered the people and said like oh well if they have too many kids like they're gonna take over and they're gonna rise up against us and if we go to war with another nation then they're gonna you know um join in with the other nation they're gonna overtake us and so kill all the boys and the midwives didn't want to do it well eventually i guess they did start doing it because moses was sent down the nile river he was put the nile river in a basket and then a lady found him and so that's where we're at many years later moses had grown up and he saw how hard they were forced to work during his visit he saw an egyptian beating one of his fellow hebrews after looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching moses killed the egyptian and hid the body in the sand the next day when moses went out to visit his people again he saw two hebrew men fighting why are you beating up your friend moses said to the one who had started the fight the man replied who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you gonna kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking, everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water and fill the water troughs for their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from their shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. When the girls returned to Raul, their father, he asked, why are you back so soon today? And he Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they asked, and then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. 
Then where is he? Their father asked. Why did you leave him there? Invite him to come and eat with us. Moses accepted the invitation, and he settled there with him. In time, Raoul gave Moses his daughter Zipporah to his wife. Later she gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom. For he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. Years passed, and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under the burden of slavery. They cried out for help, and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He sat down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angels of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it burned up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell him? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel. Yah ye, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Now go and call together all the elders of Israel. Tell them, Yah ye, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me, I have been watching closely and I see how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hizzites, and Jebusites now live. The elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us, so please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go, and I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. They will give you gifts when you go, so you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and daughters with these stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. But Moses protested again, what if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob really has appeared to you. Then the Lord said to Moses, now put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak and when he took it out again, his hand was white as snow with a severe skin disease. Now put your hand back into your cloak the lord said so moses put his hand back in again and when he took it out again it was as healthy as the rest of his body the lord said to moses if they do not believe you and they are not convinced by the first miraculous sign they will be convinced by the second sign and if they don't believe you or listen to you even after these two signs then take some water from the nile river and pour it on the dry ground when you do the water from the nile will turn to blood on the ground but moses pleaded with the lord O oh lord i'm not very good with words i never have been and i'm not now even though you have spoken to me i get 
tongue tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak and I will instruct you what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said, what about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he speaks well and look, he is on his way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak and I will instruct you both in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece and you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say and take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. So Moses went back home to Jethro, his father-in-law. Please let me return to my relatives in Egypt, Moses said. I don't even know if they are still alive. Go in peace, Jethro replied. Before Moses left Midian, the Lord said to him, return to Egypt for all those who wanted to kill you have died. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and headed back to the land of Egypt. In his hand he carried the staff of God. And the Lord told Moses, When you arrive back in Egypt, go to Pharaoh and perform all the miracles I have empowered you to do. I will harden his heart so he will refuse to let the people go. Then you will tell him, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I command you, let my son go so he can worship me. But since you have refused, I will now kill your firstborn. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife, Zipporah, took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said a bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. Now the Lord had said to Aaron, Go out into the wilderness to meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God, and he embraced him. Moses then told Aaron everything the Lord had commanded him to say, and he told him about the miraculous sign the Lord had commanded him to perform. Then Moses and Aaron returned to Egypt and called all the elders of Egypt together. Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses, and Moses performed the miraculous signs as they watched. Then the people of Israel were convinced that the Lord had sent Moses with Aaron. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so? retorted pharaoh and who is the lord why should i listen to him and let israel go i don't know the lord and i will not let israel go but aaron and moses persisted the god of the hebrews has met with us they declared so let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifices to the lord our god if we don't he will kill us with a plague or with the sword Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? Get back to work. Look, there are many of your people in the land, and you are stopping them from their work. That same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out. Let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. So the slave drivers and foremen went out and told the people, This is what Pharaoh says. I will not provide any more straw for you. Go and get it yourselves. Find it wherever you can. But you must produce just as many bricks as before. So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use as a straw. Meanwhile, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to push hard. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you with the straw, they demanded. Then they whipped the Israelite foreman they had put in charge of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas, either yesterday or today, they demanded. Demanded. So the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him, Please, don't treat your servants like this, they begged. We are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand, Make bricks. We are being beaten, but it isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, You're just lazy. Lazy. That's why you're saying, Let us go and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Now get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must still produce the full quota of bricks. The Israelite foreman could see that they were in serious trouble when they were told, You must not reduce the number of bricks you make each day. As they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron, who were waiting outside for them. The foreman said to them, May the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword in their hand and an excuse to kill us. And now we're on Matthew chapter 17, verse 10 through 27. And then we'll go straight into Matthew 18, verse 1 through 20. That should be chronological. This should be in a chronological order. <laughs> I don't know why this emotion like helps me think of words, but like for some reason it does. Anyways, okay, let's have a dance party where you find the verse though. So, so. Am I 
more than just the sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because okay. I. Okay. <laughs> so Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. Actually, let's go back and see what what happened yesterday. Jesus talked about how he was going to be um, hung on the cross. And he had a transformation on the mountain. And Moses and, um, and Elijah. Moses and Elijah um, appeared on the mountain as well. Then his disciples asked him, Why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus replied, Elijah is indeed coming first to get everything ready. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, but he wasn't recognized and they chose to abuse him. And in the same way, they will also make the Son of Man suffer. Then the disciples realized he was talking about John the Baptist. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had a faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say it to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. After they gathered again in Galilee, Jesus told them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. And the disciples were filled with grief. On their arrival in Copernicum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? They tax the people they have conquered, Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch and you will find a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin. Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eyes cause you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the ninety-nine that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among you. And now we're on Psalm chapter 22, verse 1 through 18. And then we'll go into Proverbs 5, 7 through 14. And then we'll go to Psalm 22, 19 through 31. So it should just be like back to back. And then Proverbs 5, 15, 21. And we're gonna have a... You say I'm loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I'm strong when I think I'm weak. 
okay <laughs> my god my god why have you abandoned me why are you so far away when i groan for help every day i call to you my god but you do not answer every night i lift my voice but i find no relief yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of israel our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them they cried out to you and were saved they trusted in you and were never disgraced but i am a worm not a man i am scorned and despised by all everyone who sees me mocks me they sneer and shake their heads saying is this the one who relies on the lord then let the lord save him if the lord loves him so much let the lord rescue him yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and led me to trust you at my mother's breast i am thrust into your arms at my birth you have been my god from the moment i was born do not stay so far from me for trouble is near and no one else can help me my enemies surround me like a herd of bulls fierce bulls of bashan have hemmed me in like lions they open their jaws against me roaring and tearing into their prey my life is poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart is like wax melting within me my strength is dried up like sun-baked clay my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth you have laid me in the dust and left me for dead my enemies surround me like a pack of dogs an evil gang closes in on me they have pierced my hands and feet i can count all all my bones my enemies stare at me and gloat they divided my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing O oh lord do not stay far away you are my strength come quickly to my aid save me from the sword bear my precious life from these dogs snatch me from the lion's jaw and from the horns of these wild oxen i will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters i will praise you among the assembled people praise the lord all you who fear him honor him all you descendants of jacob show him reverence all you descendants of israel for he has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy he has not turned his back on them he has listened to their cries for help i will praise you in the great assembly i will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you the poor will eat and be satisfied all who seek the lord will praise him their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy the whole earth will acknowledge the lord and return to him all the families of the nations will bow down before him for royal power belongs to the lord he rules all the nations Let let the rich of the earth feast and worship bow before him all who are mortal all whose lives will end as dust our children will also serve him future generations will hear about the wonders of the lord his righteous acts will be told to those not yet born they will hear about everything he has done period and now proverbs 5 7 through 14 so now my sons listen to me never stray from what i am about to say stay away from her don't go near the door of her house if you do you will lose your honor and will lose to merciless people all you have achieved strangers will consume your wealth and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor in the end you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body you will say how i hate discipline if only i had not ignored all the warnings oh why didn't i listen to my teachers why didn't i pay attention to my instructors i have come to the brink of utter ruin and now i must face public disgrace drink water from your own well share your love with only your wife why spill the water of your springs in the streets have sex with just anyone you should reserve it for yourselves never share it with strangers let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you rejoice in the wife of your youth she is a loving deer a graceful doe let her breast satisfy you always may you always be captivated by her love why be captivated my son by a immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman for the lord sees clearly what a man does examining every path he takes and that is it we are done with day 26 and 27 we are on january 28th that will be tomorrow um and i'm not going to talk very much but what i am going to say is that that's not my best angle <laughs> and also um there was so much there the songs were powerful i mean normally they're you know very upbeat and this one was really for like when you're going through it and you just feel like you're so alone i don't know but um i am gonna end this now so i love you jesus loves you i will see y'all tomorrow bye